afternoon, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh. I want to acknowledge the Earthly Mother, who is Wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. I also want to acknowledge Yahweh Shai. I want to thank the Most High for giving knowledge and understanding of uh, events in the past, more clarification of the events that are occur uh, occurring presently, and more knowledge and understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Today, we're going to be getting into the, uh, the heads of the eagles again and clearing up some biblical prophecy and the order in which uh, I've been led to believe through um, <clears throat> my studies recently that things are going to begin to uh, unfold. And we got a lot of things to kind of get through today. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. But it just the thing is, is that, um, you know, with these three blood moons that are coming in the next three months, you know, the fact that we're coming toward the end of our 400 years of captivity and the Most High is increasing knowledge and understanding of um, what's happened to us in the past, you know, and understanding, you know, our our station, you know, in this reality, how we're being moved from being the tail back to being the head, how we're learning again about our inheritance of the land, okay? And um, it's just absolutely amazing to see how clear things are becoming through the uh, power that the most, when the Most High sends the Holy Spirit to open our eyes and uh, for understanding. And some people were saying like, well, you believe this before. And that's true. I, I used to believe that um, and a lot of different things before until the most I opened my knowledge and understanding. That's why this uh, awakening is a fluid event. I'm not the same person that I was five years ago, seven years ago three years ago, even a year ago, because the more that the Most High opens my eyes to see things, the the more clear the puzzle becomes. And really in this truth, is not that the way it should be? Should we not be growing and learning and letting the Most High open our, our understanding? Many people seem to think that if, you know, you should pretty much believe exactly the same things that you believed 20 years ago. Now, how is that possible? Or 10 years ago, if you came into the truth and you believed a certain thing, but you didn't have all of the information. Only way that you can continue to believe all the stuff that you believed before is pretty much just disregard all the new information. And that's what many people do. They disregard other information, historical information, other books that have been hidden. And then they fail to grow. So therefore they stay dead in their understanding. And the Most High said that that's how it would be. You know, um, I learned from quite a few different people when I first came into the truth. I watched many different videos from many different brethren. And um, <clears throat> it was good for that season of my, of my life. And then the Most High took me to a different, uh, a different direction. And we're gonna put some of that information together today. But uh, the brethren that I study with, uh, we kind of follow the same pattern where, you know, we came into the truth. We learned as much as we could from a lot of different people. And then the Most High took us in different directions because now at the, now that we're at the end, the Most High is now revealing the truth that the other nations have hidden from us. Some people can accept it. Some people can't. And it's not up to me to, you know, get people to accept it. That's up to the Most High to open your understanding to it. That's up to the Holy Spirit who was going to be sent. She was going to be sent to um, give back understanding. Give back memories that we had before. Understand that we had before. Not something new. But to clarify that picture. And I think that the Most High has a, sent the Holy Spirit and she's opened up my understanding. I want to share that with you guys today. We're going to be talking about how the events of Exodus are going to happen again. The plagues of Egypt, I've done videos on this before and other people have as well, are going to come back on the earth again. And the Most High is going to um, protect us like he did before. 
And then um, <clears throat> when you read Exodus, I think it's chapter three, <clears throat> or just read the book of Exodus, we were protected in the land of Goshen, in the best lands of Egypt. And we're going to get into that today. Let's see. It's not going to. I'm just going to move my slides here. Okay. Hey, do we already know about Deuteronomy 28 and the curses that were on our people? You know, there's going to be the last 400 years and how we were going to um, <clears throat> be at the foot. They're going to be the tail of the other nations. And they were going to do us wrong. And that's exactly what's happened. Because the fact that we broke the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments, we had to pay. So we all understand that. I just don't need to kind of go over that again and again and again. But I want to read this because I actually um, think this kind of sums it up. Jeremiah 5 and 19. And when the people ask, why has the Lord, our God, done all this to us? You will tell them, as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your own land, so now you will serve foreigners in a land not your own. These foreigners came here and took our land and made us serve them in our land. Now that we're coming to the end of this, you're starting to see the switch. You're starting to see how, you know, this with this government shutdown, things are not as they've been before the longest in history. We're looking at a stock market that's we said we're running on fumes at this point. We're looking at people who are losing faith because these churches have been lying to them. And the truth is out here, the truth of who we are, the truth of who the other nations are, and the truth of who the Most High is dealing with. Now, we know that the Most High is going to cleanse the land. And we know if you look in Numbers 35 and 33, it tells you exactly how he's going to cleanse the land. So you can look that up yourself. But he, he has already told us that he's going to cleanse the land. Because we went through our punishment. He's now switching the curses and that cup is switching over to the other nations. Time is just about up. And you can feel it. You can feel it in the air. You can see it in society. You can see it the way people are. You can see it with the, people, the fact that people don't have any direction because they're realizing that the society is based on lies. The people who run everything have been lying to them about everything. And they're the basest of, of people, the basest of men have been running this earth. And now the Most High is about to reestablish his people back on top the way it's always been, the way it always was supposed to be anyways. Everyone else, all the other nations have had their run. Now it's our time. Now, let's take a quick look here. We're going to get into some things. We don't have to get into some of it. We're going to go a little bit deeper. Some things, hey, it's, it's pretty much a given. We, we've all very familiar with these verses. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 10. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. Now we know in the book of, e uh, well, in the book of Exodus, when Egypt was destroyed, the land was still there, but all the things that they had made, all their structures, okay, their cattle, their livestock, everything that they, you know, established their society was destroyed. And that's what's going to happen again. The Most High is going to destroy their society. The land is the land. The land did not do anything. It's what the people did with the land and how they established their societies on the land. And that's what's going to be destroyed. And it's kind of funny because I'm sitting here listening to all these people like, well, America's going to be destroyed. America's going to be destroyed. America's going to be destroyed. Okay. Our people were first destroyed in Mexico in Central America and in South America. Why don't I ever hear people talking about Mexico is going to be destroyed? Central America is going to be destroyed. South America is going to be destroyed because our people were destroyed there as well. How come this is just America is going to be destroyed and that's it? 
when I've been reading the accounts from uh, De La Casas, those are things that weren't happening necessarily in America. Those things were happening in what you now see as Mexico. That land has to be cleansed. South America, that land has to be cleansed. Things happen to us over in the other parts of the world. That land has to be cleansed as well. So it's not just America, 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 which everyone seems to be stuck on. It is all these lands will have to be cleansed. And the Most High is going to cleanse them because our people were, um, you know, destroyed all up and down this continent. And now you're looking at this blood moon and you're seeing the vast majority of, of it occurring over the Americas, over Central America, over Mexico, all those areas, because this land has never been cleansed from the death and destruction that our people <clears throat> had, to, had to experience while we were here. And that's why when we read things like Revelation 18, uh, verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that, might, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. That's because this place is going to be destroyed first. The foundations, all of their buildings, all of the things that make, you know, that makes them a society here is going to be destroyed here first. That's why all these other nations are standing afar off and watching the destruction. Okay? Now, we know this one as well. As he starts to cleanse the land, and he's going to protect us here in our lands again. That's when you get this right here, Isaiah 14, 1 through 3. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So he's going to, you know, cleanse the land, then set us back here in our land, and there will be some strangers that will be here. That's what the Most High is saying right here. Verse go to verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord, for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. We're going to be taking people captives who had us in captivity. That's what this is talking about right here. Okay, we were taken captive here in our lands. We're going to be taking people captive. Well, both well, the Hebrews are going to have captives, you know, slaves, bondmen, bondwomen, just like they had here. Same thing's going to happen to them. Verse 3, And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Now, you know, we, this is very, you know, this, this is a couple of verses that are very popular in Israel. We all know these, correct? Now, let's discuss, let's make this connection between um, the land of Goshen during the time of Egypt and Exodus and how Goshen is going to play another part again today. This land of Goshen is going to be the Americas. That's why he's clearing this place out first before he goes and starts to destroy the other two heads of the eagle. That's why one eagle is going to die first. One head of the three is going to be killed first. And the other two, we'll talk about what's going to happen to them, all using scriptures as well. Now, we, now, to get more understanding about, you know, the yeah, Goshen back then, we need to look at the book of Jasher right here. Uh, book of Jasher, chapter 55. Let's start at uh, verse 18. And Yosef and all his people returned afterward home to Misraim. And Yaakov and his sons and all the children of his household came with Yosef to Misraim. And Yosef placed them in the best part of Misraim, in the land of Goshen. <clears throat> so, the best lands back then in Egypt were in the land of Goshen. And the Hebrews were placed there at this time. That's exactly what's going to happen again. The Most High is going to give us our the best lands of the entire world 
which are here in the Americas, back to us. See how it's, it's, it's repeating itself. Except remember now, you know, the, Egypt this time is a worldwide system. We were in bondage worldwide. So when these plagues of Egypt, what it talks about in um, 2nd to 15 come, there also has to be a Goshen, a land of safe haven for his people. Because they had a land of safe haven back then, they're going to have a land of safe haven again here. And when you get all these people talking about, we need to go back to the Middle East, you need to go over to Africa, whatever else, they're trying to get you away from your land of safe haven. They're trying to get you to go somewhere else because the angels are going to protect his people here. Because that was part of our prophecy, that was part of our covenant, part of the promises that we were going to be separate from the other nations. And I made I discussed that in one of the other videos, <clears throat> how we were supposed to be separated and the Most High is going to separate us again. That's why all these other nations are, are looking, are all far off and they're watching Babylon their whole, their cities all being destroyed. And then they're also weeping because they're not going to be able to get the resources from here anymore because they're going to be separated from us again, because that was part of the prophecies as well. Now let me read uh, 55 and 23. And Yosef answering, saying, Behold, I have stationed them in the land of Goshen, for they are shepherds. Therefore, let them remain in Goshen to feed their flocks apart from the Mizraim. So the Most High is going to feed us. He's going to comfort us away from the Egyptians. And that's why he's given us our land back so that we can be fed and taken care of away from all of the destruction that he's about to bring on the earth. He talks about how we're going to see, we're only going to see the destruction from the other nations because we'll be able to see it, but we'll be seeing it from our lands while he's protecting us. See, all this is all working out. Okay? That's why I wanted to bring this up from the book of Jasher, because it talks about that, how Goshen was the best lands at that time in, in, this, in the area of Egypt, of the, of, you know, the state of Egypt at that time. And just since this time it's a worldwide Egypt, he's going to give us our land of Goshen back before he brings us plagues on these other nations. Okay? I had discussed how, on the last video, the regrafting in will begin in the best lands. I'm going to show you where I got this from. This is actually from um, the Book of Mormon. And it's funny because people keep talking, man, it's, oh, you're reading from the Book of Mormon, you're going off. The Book of Mormon has nothing to do with the Mormon religion. I could say exact same thing about the Bible. Oh, you're reading the Bible, you're going off because, you know, that's what Christians use. The Christians don't use the Bible. Mormons don't use the Book of Mormon. This is just information, Okay. This is just information that was pretty much they they were used to hold for us until the awakening happened. Just like the, the other Christians have used our Bible. Have, well, they walk around with Bibles, but they don't really use them. Um, and they pretty much just held the information for us, for the awakening. Same thing with this Book of Mormon. Let me show you. It talks about how um, the Most High scattered us into two different lands first. He scattered us into a... a two bad lands first. And then he, in the third scattering was into the best lands, the choice lands, the hidden lands. Okay. Let's read. Uh, this is uh, the book of Jacob. We're going to read chapter five, verses 21 through 25. And it came to pass that the servant said unto his master, how comest thou hither to plant this tree or this branch of the tree? For behold, it was the poorest spot in all the land of thy vineyard. And the vineyard here is discussing the world. And he um, grafted in one of the, um, the natural olive branches in a bad land. Okay. And the Lord of the vineyard said unto him, counsel me not. I knew that it was a poor spot of ground. Wherefore I said unto thee, I have nourished it this long time. And thou beholdest that it hath brought forth much fruit. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard said unto his servant, Look hither, behold, I have planted another branch of the tree also, and thou knowest that this spot of ground was poorer than the first. But behold, the tree, I have nourished it for this long time, and it hath brought forth much fruit. Therefore gather it and lay it up against the season, that I may preserve it unto mine own self. Now, now you're talking about three different branches. 
One was planted in a, in a bad land. One was planted in a worse land. So you're talking about the lands of Shem and the lands of Ham. Remember, there's three brothers. So he already had us scattered in with the other nations after the flood. That's why you had Abraham uh, growing up. Some of the stories actually with him being with Nimrod because we were already scattered in with these other nations. And that's where you get these first two you know, accounts from of the, uh, <clears throat> of the uh, what is it, the good branches, the natural branches being scattered in with the wild olive tree, okay? Now let's check out where the last scattering happened, which is where the regathering is going to begin. Let's go to 24. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard said again unto his servants, look hither and behold another branch also, which I have planted Behold, that I have nourished it also, and it hath brought forth fruit. And he said unto the servant, Look hither, and behold the last. Behold, this have I planted in a good spot of ground. And I have, let me see if I can finish that one up real fast. Let me get to it. 25. And I have nourished it this long time, and only a part of the tree hath brought forth tame fruit, and the other part of the tree hath brought forth wild fruit. Okay? Now, so you have one and two being scattered, or the natural branches scattered in with the other nations, in Ham's land and Shem's land. The third one was scattered in a good spot of ground. Okay? Now, to further explain that part about the good spot of the ground, we need to skip over here to verse 43 which kind of goes with the third part again. And behold, this last, whose branch hath withered away, I did plant in a good spot of ground. Yea, even that which was choice unto me, above all other parts of the land of my vineyard. Remember, the vineyard is referring to the whole earth. The third part was the best part of the lands of the entire world which would be the Americas, which is why you had all these people here, all these Hebrews that were here when the um, Europeans came because they were never here before. This was a new world to them. That's why they hid all of the information. That's why they burned everything when they got here because they didn't want anyone else to realize that this was the choice land. This was the Most High's inheritance to his people. So therefore they could claim it for themselves. All, all the way up to this day. And that's why you start hearing all these people, this land is going to be destroyed. It's going to be destroyed. No, it's not. It's going to be cleansed, not destroyed. Big difference. It's going to be cleansed to be given back to the inheritance of the rightful owners. That's what's happening. That's why you're seeing these blood moons over this area. That's why you're seeing the eclipse making an X over this area. That's why now you're seeing government shutdown. You're starting to see the stock market going away. That's because he is going to cleanse this land here first. You should start to see a pattern. You should start to see what's going on now, looking around you, fighting for a wall, fighting to keep people out, trying to, you know, to hold on to this land, you know, any way that they can. Why the military budget is so huge for the, for the Americas because they're trying their best to keep control of lands that are not theirs by inheritance. And no matter how much money they spend, when the Most High says your time is up in our land, up in our inheritance, no matter how much money you spend, the Most High is going to give back what was taken from his kids. There's no way around it. That's just the Most High. He's the one that dictates and decides. Not you, not me, none of us. We're just pawns in the game. That's all that we are. Now, I'm going to show you how he's uh, showed you the three. The first two were the lands of Ham and Shem. The third one was our land. Now I'm going to show you where he's going to start, you know, bringing people back. Right here in 63. This is still um, the book of Jacob, book of Mormon, chapter 5. Now we're in verse 63. Let me just read it from here. Graft in the branches. Begin at the last, that they may be the first, and that they, <clears throat> and that the first may be last, and dig about the trees, both old and young, 
the first and the last, and the last and the first, that all may be nourished once again for the last time. And if you look at the bottom, there's actually um, precepts that connect with what's going on up here. Okay, and they're precepted with the Bible. Okay, so you can check those out yourself. Some are in the Bible, some of them are from the Book of Mormon. You know, so that's up to you if you want to check that out um, on your own. So now, so far, let's kind of regroup, regroup what we got now. We had to go through our punishment because of we us breaking the law, such as commandments. Most I was going to send someone here. We were already scattered and destroyed in the other nations. He was going to send someone here to destroy the lands here. That's exactly what he's done. At the end of the 400 years, he's going to start to wake us back up in the lands of our captivity, Baruch chapter 2. Our, our lands of our captivity have been, majority of it has been here in our lands. That's what's been going on. He is going to start the regrafting process in the last place that we were scattered from, which was here. Now you have all these blood moons and you have all these signs in the sky coming over here. Now you have government shutdown. You have things that are just right on the edge of teetering over and, and just going into all chaos here. I'm telling you, this plan is not going to be, it's going to, the foundation, the things that they have built are going to be destroyed. But the land will be renewed. Numbers 35, 33. Now, let's get into some more scripture here. Actually, uh, am I going to be in the draw? All right, let me see. Hmm. I don't remember this part yet. All right, I'll come back on this one later. It's kind of in the wrong order. All right, let's go ahead and go to uh, Babylon, the great city, because I've been hearing a lot of people talking about Babylon, Babylon, the great city. We're going to read Revelation chapter 17, 4 through 6. If you want to get into the more information, look at the precepts on the left-hand side to get more understanding of what's going on here. And the, I'm going to read Revelation chapter 17, 4 through 6. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahamashiach, Yahawashai. Okay, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, when you talk about this whole thing with the great city, the great city of Babylon, okay, let's go ahead and skip over to, if you look on the left-hand side, we've got uh, Revelations 14 and 8. I'm going to read that real quick about the great city. Here, it's right here. You can see there's a lot more precepts on the side over there. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Babylon is going to be destroyed because of that great cup, but the Most High used her to uh, put the whole world under a spell. All nations have drank, okay, of her fornication. That's why this whole thing is going to be a worldwide destruction which is why there's a need for a, a big land of, of uh, Goshen for these plagues that are about to come on the earth. Now, a key is this land of Babylon has been broken. Check this out. Revelation 16, 19. This great city, okay? And the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came into remembrance before the Most High to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So this great city of Babylon was broken into three cities once it was brought back again. Remember, Rome was going to be here, destroyed, uh, and then it's going to come back to life again. Well, when it comes back to life again, it's going to be three cities and it's going to be a worldwide system. And that goes back to the whole story with the eagle and the three heads. 
Okay, this is huge information right here. And this is actually all part of the precepts that I've got from one of the other um, scriptures I just read. If you look at the precepts yourself, you'll see them yourself, how they all connect. So let's see here. And the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before the Most High. So yeah, the city came back to life. And when it came back to life, it came back with three different cities because Babylon was, was over before it was over one area. This Babylonian city is actually a worldwide control. It controls the entire world. And here it is, the trinity of globalist control. You have the Vatican City with their own religion, controls the religion. City of London, finance, Washington DC, the military. All three are separate states, completely independent of their respective countries. Those are your three heads of the eagle. There's your Babylon. And the first head is going to be destroyed. Hold on fast. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let's continue. Because I have some people like, hey, well, Babylon's going to be destroyed. What about that Jeremiah 50 and 23? It says, how is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? How does that happen? Because that is just the military part of Babylon that's going to be destroyed first. The other two are going to fight against each other. That's how it's going to go down. That's why that Jeremiah 50 and 23, how is the hammer of the whole earth? Because America is the hammer of the whole earth. America is the muscle of Babylon. And that's how the Most High is going to cut it down in an hour. And all the nations are going to be far off watching as this, um, the hammer of the whole earth is destroyed by the Most High. And not only is he going to destroy, he said he's going to destroy in an hour. Okay. So this is like that whole thing is we're going to concentrate first on the um, the military, the DC part of uh, Babylon. It's broken into three parts. I just showed you that in the scriptures how it was going to be come back to life in three parts. And now I'm showing you that order. The first thing he's going to destroy is going to be here because he's going to reestablish our land, which is going to be like the land of Goshen when all these plagues are going worldwide. Second Ezra, chapter 12, verse 26. And whereas thou sawest that the great head appeared no more, it signifieth that one of them shall die upon his bed and yet with pain. So one is going to die in his own dwelling area where, he's, where he lives and with pain because the Most High is going to bring the pain. All right. So that's what this is talking about right here. One of the heads is going to die. So one of the cities is going to be destroyed. The first city is going to be destroyed it is the one that has been residing on our land. The people have been taking our resources and our land and our labor this whole time. Okay. Let me take a look at Jeremiah 50 and 28. It says, the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord of the Most High, the vengeance of his temple. Okay, so people are going to be fleeing. Remember, it talks about in Revelation 18 and 4, flee out of Babylon. You're going to be leaving that mind state, leaving the understanding of Babylon, and you're going to be proclaiming the truth and to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Most High. We're declaring that the Most High is going to be bringing vengeance upon the people that have um, taken our land, taken our identity, taken our resources. That's what this is talking about right here. Okay, now let me go back to this Joel 2 and 20 because this all starts to make much more sense. Let me go back. I have to kind of go back and find it here. There we go. Joel 2 and 20. But I will remove far off from you the Norman, northern army and I will drive them into a land barren and desolate. So he's going to be removing the armies from his children's inheritance. He's going to be removing them to their lands. Their lands are the land of Ham and the land of Shem. They're going to be leaving the Most High's inheritance to his people. That's what this is referring to. 
Okay, let me read it again. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. So the Most High is going to be removing these armies away from our lands. This is, this is what the Most High is talking about doing. Vengeance is his. He's the one that's going to be doing this. See, that's why you have to kind of, you have to be able to have the Most High has opened up your eyes, understanding to many different things. And you got to go to many different avenues in order to be able to put all this information together. Okay. Now we'll kind of take a look at what's going to happen with London and the Vatican. The Most High talks about here. Okay. So now we got the Most High restoring his people giving them back like the best lands of the world, protecting them in the land of, you would say like a technically like a Goshen, while all these plagues are happening worldwide. And these plagues are now going to come on the last two heads, Vatican City, which is the religious or, you know, control order, and the city of London, finance. So pretty much everywhere else, these you know, plagues are going to be hitting. So let's go to Second Ezra 11. Let me get that real quick. Second Ezra 11 and 32. We're going to read 32 through 34. But this head put the whole... Are we actually doing it? Yeah. But this head put the whole earth in fear and bear rule in it over all those that dwelt upon the earth with much oppression and it had the governance of the world more than all the wings that had been. And after this, I beheld, and lo, the head that was in the midst suddenly appeared no more, like as the wings. But there remained the two heads, which also in like sort ruled upon the earth and over those that dwelt therein. So this one head, you know, was oppressing everyone. And then eventually it's destroyed. It's gone. And then there remained these two heads. Okay. Which also will rule the earth for a time. Okay. Let me see here. There's second Ezra 12, 27, 28. Let me sure I got this here. No, that's not it. Did I skip? I, think I went too fast. Checking my stuff here, kind of skipping around here a little bit. Uh, let me check. Let me get my second. Let me get my book. Make sure I have the right things here. A lot of a lot of scripture, so we're kind of skipping around a little bit. Let me make sure I got the right stuff here. Second Ezra chapter twelve. Okay. Second Ezra chapter 12, 27, 28. Uh, that's not it. Okay. There we go. For the two that remain, okay, so now we're talking about the two heads that are left of the eagle. For the two that remain shall be slain with the sword. For the sword of the one shall devour the other. But at the last shall he fall through the sword himself. So these last two heads are going to be fighting with each other. Okay, they're going to be fighting, you know, each other at this point. You imagine when uh, <clears throat> the Most High delivers his people and all the world sees it and they realize that all the stuff that we've been trying to tell them was the truth and that they've been lied to this entire time. You imagine the horror and the emptiness and the anger the when these people are going to feel when they realize the truth, I just think, I mean, it's just going to be too much to bear that they've been, you know, oppressing the most high's jewels, his people this entire time. And as we've been trying to tell them, they didn't want to hear it. And now they realize that there's no way out. I said, just, you know, the emptiness, you know, that these people are going to feel is going to be, you know, 
crazy to, crazy to even think about, to try to imagine. That's why you get in that whole wisdom of Solomon chapter five and then the surprise on people. They've had us as a tail. They've had their boots on our neck the entire time. And if these are the ones, these are the people of the Most High that we've had in the subjection this whole time, and now we got to pay for this, you know, there's going to be a lot of very upset people. Now we can get into 2 Ezra, chapter 15. Let's see, 15 through 20. Now this kind of explains why you start reading this. When you read this in 2 Ezra, chapter five, 15, 15 through 20. Here we go. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, because these are the people that have been lying to them the entire time. So they're not going to have to hear anything that they have to say. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Behold, saith the Most High, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Libanus to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. Let's read 21 as well. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus saith the most high power. So as they've done, the things they've done to us are going to be repaid to them. As you can see, there's precepts on the left-hand side of this older Bible that I have that gives more understanding of what you're reading in the, Old, the New Testament and some of the Old Testament as well. Okay, so now we're going to read five, second Ezra 15 and five. Behold the Lord, so behold saith the most high, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. That's the plagues now are being shifted. That's what this is talking about right here. And there's a precept to that. Let's read that Deuteronomy 28 and 59. Let me get that real quick. Mm. Phone's working a little slow. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 59. Then the Most High will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. This is when he starts to switch the plagues or the curses, taking them off of us, and putting them on the other nations. See how that works right there? That we were suffering these plagues. All these plagues and all these curses were on us. Now he's switching them. He's you know, he restores us back in our land, restores our inheritance, and then the plague switch from us to the other nations. And that's what you're starting to see all, all these signs in the sky because the Most High, you know, down here, the Gentiles and Esau have switched up the seasons, the times. We can't, we don't know what time we're in, but the Most High knows and he makes it totally clear through uh, things in the sky, signs in the sky, because those are the things that um, Esau and the um, Gentiles cannot manipulate. All right. Now, let's see, 2nd Ezra 15 and 12. Egypt shall mourn. That's going to be the whole world is going to mourn. And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. The Most High is going to bring punishment and the plague on the foundations, the things that the other nations have set up on the land. Why would he, he's not going to destroy the, our inheritance. People have been and, you know, have taken over our inheritance before. He's going to renew it and restore it and give it back to his people. So hopefully, you know, this gives a little more clarification. 
of these end times prophecies. Because we have like a lot of uh, Gentiles trying to break things down and they're always trying to push everything over there in the Middle East and the Middle East and Middle East. And they just pretty much have ignored everything that has happened to our people over here. All of the death and destruction over here must be cleansed, must be paid for. And that's why, like I said, you're seeing all these signs pointing to the lands over here. And other people who keep saying just America is going to be destroyed. What about all of the other death and destruction that happened to our people down in you know, said Central America, South America, Mexico? Why, those places don't have to be cleansed as well? Of course they do. But you got a lot of people seeming to think that they're going to run from here after they've ran this place to the ground and they're just going to run somewhere else and be safe. The Most High is going to bring the plagues worldwide. But he's going to protect his people and anyone else that he's decided that he's going to um, have mercy on. It's not up to us to dictate who's going to be good, who's going to be bad, who's going to be saved, who's not going to be saved. Most High has already dictated that. It's our job as Hebrews to be the light to the ones that the Most High um, has chosen to save. It's our job to be used to give clarification at this time as to what is happening um, here in the world. So our punishment is coming to an end. The rest of the world is going to enter into their punishment, their chastisement. The Most High is now making it plain through um, signs in the sky, signs in society, who he's awakening, who he's not awakening. The Most High rebrought, he um, scattered us among Shem and Ham first. Lastly, he brought a group of our Hebrew brothers, brethren here to this land. They were scattered from here last. Most likely talk about how he's going to do the regrafting back in the worst place we were scattered back last, which was here. He's going to cleanse this land. It will be like Goshen, where he will be protecting us. Then the plagues are going to go, go ahead and go on to the other nations worldwide. And they're going to be stuck in them, fighting, killing each other. And eventually they will turn and work together to come over here and try to destroy the lands here. Then the Most High will send his son and he will deal with it then, just like in the valley. Okay, of Armageddon. Just like it happened during the time of uh, Egypt when they did let us go and then all the Egyptians got together and tried to come back and to destroy us. Um, why we were at the Red Sea. So it's, it's all starting to follow a pattern. It's all repeating itself. And I just thank the Most High for opening um, my eyes um, for understanding and leading me to other books and other understanding in order to be able to share with the brethren. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh. I give acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. I also acknowledge Yahweh Shai. I pray that this lesson gives more knowledge, understanding, and clarification and allows, you, um, allows us to um, be the priests and kings and queens that we're supposed to be and be a light to the people that the Most High intends to wake up. Shalom.